Hi folks, Dave at Creative Craft House to show you uh, this set of Napier's Bones that we uh, recently uh, developed. Uh, the first part of this uh, video I'm just going to explain the, the product that we have here and then I will do a second short session on, on how to use them, but there are many uh, excellent videos and websites that uh, will talk about how to use them so that might be a better source uh, for, for getting de more detailed information on how to use them. They really are quite amazing. They, they were designed in 1617 by John Napier. He was a Scottish mathematician and, and probably England's first great mathematician. It's quite an ingenious device. It, it simplified complex multiplication essentially and it will do other uh, math processes such as division and square roots though they, they're a bit cumbersome. It was essentially the first calculator, and, and it was in common use for, for nearly three centuries. Um, it, it's something I find wonderfully elegant um, in, in, in understanding and explaining how basic math works. It can be a valuable tool for educators, as well as people who just like kind of geeky things. Uh, in researching Napier's Bones, I, I, found, I found only one other set available on the net. It came from UK. It was quite nice, but, but it had only one set of rods. These are called the rods or the bones. They're called bones because originally they were made from bone. Uh, and it had no, no case, so it was kind of cumbersome to put away. So I, I tried to, to fix that. Um, you, you, what we've got here is a, is a base. Um, it's, it's floorboard, very solid. Uh, we have uh, alder wood rods, and you have two sets, two complete sets, uh, from essentially uh, one through nine and zero, uh, and they come stored in the base here, too too deep. So you see, you've got uh, um, twenty rods all, all together. Um, and that gives you just a lot more flexibility in what numbers you can create uh, to mul multiply with. Uh, you also have a cover. Um, so it puts away you know, really very nicely and will store very nicely. It's not the kind of thing you're going to use every day, so I thought um, storage would be uh, quite nice. Um, and optionally, as an, as an add-on, uh, I, I made a square root card. Um, something some people may not want, so I didn't want to price it in as a, as a normal item. And optionally, you can buy uh, added sets of the rods should you want more more rods for even more for longer or more complex numbers. Okay, so that is the set uh, as we offer it. And, and now, uh, give me a moment, and we'll talk about how to use the rods. Okay, now here is a, a, the basic instruction on how to use the rods. And as I said, there are some very good websites that will give you lots of more detailed information, but I want to give you an idea here. Let's suppose I have this this, this multiplication I want to do, and it's 2 times um, 546,987. I have taken the rods, 500, five, as you can see here, uh, 546,987, and lined them up. Um, and to complete this calculation, since I want to multiply it by 2, I'm going to go to the 2 row. All right, so I'm going to be using this row across here. What you do is you start at the right, and you're going to look at the numbers within these kind of parallelogram boxes. See, there's, there's only one in here, the last one that's, that's a 4. Then there's an 8 and a 1, and, uh, and here's a uh, 6 and a 1, rather, and an 8 and a 1, and a 2 and a 1, and so forth. And we're going to add those. And we're going to start from the right. Now the answer to our answer to our um, equation, two times that big number, is for the furthest number on the right is the four. All right. The next number is the sum of the numbers in these this parallelogram. So six plus one is seven. So the tens digit is essentially seven. The next digit, which is the hundreds digits, is eight plus one is nine. The next digit is um, 2 plus 1. The next digit, 8 plus 1, which is 9. And then the 0 plus 0 is 0. And then we've got a 1 here. So the answer to the uh, equation is uh, putting the 1,093,974. And that's the process that you're going to use. Now, you will get situations like this. Let me take the, just to make it easy, I'm going to use the same number up top and multiply it by, let's say, 6. Now watch what happens here. Um, 
reading across, I've got a 2 on the furthest right, then an 8 and a 4 here. When you run into that situation where the sum is more than 10, 8 and 4 is 12, keep the 2 and carry the 1 over to the next block. So I've got 1 plus 4 plus 4, or 9. So the next digit is 9. So the last three digits are 9, 2, 2 so far. Um, I come over here, and 6 plus 5 is 11, so I'm going to keep the 1 and carry the 1 over to the 4 plus 3 plus 1, which is 8. Then 0 plus 2 is 2, and then a 3. So the answer to 6 times 546,987 is 3,281,922. Uh, All right, see how simple that is? Now, let's say we were doing something a, a little more complex, and let's say we wanted to do 56 times 546. What we do is we essentially do that do it one row at a time. We would start with the uh, the ones, the six in this case, and do six times that big number, which we've already done here. All right, that's that number there. Now we would come up and we would do the ten digits, so we'd add a zero here to the end, and do the multiplication five times our big number. So if we look at the five table, we're going to have um, a 5 on the end, then a 3 plus 0, or 3, then a 5 plus 4 is 9, and then a 0 plus 4 is 4, 0 plus 3 is 3, then a 7, and then a 2. Alright, so uh, the bones do the multiplication. We still have to do the addition. Okay, so what we would do here is we would now add this up, and the sum of this, if I can read my writing here, uh, which I can't really read very well. <laughs> Three. Well, the sum of these two, I can't read my right. The sum of these two uh, would be the answer to 56 times 546,987. Okay? So that, that gives you a good starting point for uh, how to go about this. Um, oh, that's a 5. Okay, 7, 2, 9 is 10, 11, 12, 13, 6. Zero, 03, so that should be my answer if my addition was correct. All right. Uh, it is possible to do division. It's a little bit cumbersome. I won't go through that here. It is possible to do square roots uh, using the square root tool uh, that we provide as an option. And that is, that is uh, when used, it goes in the board uh, on the right here. And if I wanted to find the square root of that 546,987, I would use this tool and go through procedures, which I won't outline here, but which are available on the internet. All right. I uh, hope this is something you enjoy. It's very unusual and uh, very historical. Thanks very much.